Right, you lot. Aston Villa beat Arsenal 2 0 on the weekend. We're 2 1 up on aggregate against Lille. Fourth spot is back in our hands. The coefficient is done, I think, um, because Borussia Dortmund beat Atletico Madrid. So we need to get fourth to get Champions League. Fifth would be Europa League or the same as winning the Conference League. We go to Lille tomorrow. We go to France. Clara and Blue in full swing. Unai Emery's got us ticking back in the Premier League. Can we tick over in this second leg? Get the win and be in our first European semi-final in a very, very long time. We're going to go through what I think we should do in terms of starting lineup, uh, as well as Lille, a little bit about them at home, because they are relatively, or if not very, impressive, and what I think will happen for the game. If you're enjoying the Villa content, leave a like, subscribe for more, and comment down below what you think is going to happen in our second leg quarterfinal against Losk Lille. So as you can see on the screen next to me, a couple of changes from our 2-0 win against Arsenal. The first obvious one that we'll talk about is Douglas Luiz, still um, disqual disqualified, suspended, suspended for the Arsenal game, and he will miss the Bournemouth game this Sunday as well. So he comes into here, he's a dead cert to get 90 minutes in this game, unless he gets injured effectively, because we need to rest other players around him. There's a couple of other players that I've dropped, and that is purely because I don't want them to get tired legs in the Premier League. We're still pushing for Champions League. I understand that winning a European Cup would be fantastic, but I feel like we need to manage both and probably prioritise the Premier League. The number one priority for any team should be the Premier League and getting into the highest level of competition next season that we possibly possibly can the champions league the revenue from the champions league for ffp is next to invaluable for us at the moment despite it having a monetary value but we get in to the team emmy martinez in goal obviously no one else is going to be there alex marino replaces dina again purely so that dina can rest his legs up for the bournemouth game this weekend clement longley gives pal torres a rest and i think concert moves into center back because matty cash is back from his hamstring injury and again probably won't be selected in the Premier League straight away so I think should just go in from the start get some minutes under his belt and um, give concert a rest of having to constantly run up and down the wing and then you can sub on Diego Carlos for concert a little bit later in the game or even Pau Torres um, or even Callum Chambers if the game is going well John McGinn takes Morgan Rogers spot on the left hand side um, again because Douglas Louise is in the team Morgan Rogers has been playing a lot of football recently at a lot of a higher intensity and level than he's used to playing for Middlesbrough in the championship so I think he's the natural selection to get dropped and have a little bit of a rest of the old legs because I feel like he could be very very crucial against Bournemouth uh, Tim Rogbenham replaces Yuri Tielemans in that midfield as well um, purely again Yuri has played a lot of minutes at a role which demands a lot more running from him he's been fantastic I think he's earned a rest and I think that Tim is more than capable of coming into this team and doing something for us against Lille We've already gone through Douglas Louise. He was the easiest one to pick because he's suspended and he's one of our best players. So he obviously goes in. And then Leon Bailey didn't start against Arsenal on the weekend despite coming on and scoring a fantastic goal. Um, so I think he gets the nod. This one, again, could go either way. It could be Diaby out there, to be honest with you. I don't think it really matters too much. Uh, Ollie Watkins, obviously, is going to start every game for Aston Villa from now till the end of the season. Touchwood bar injury uh, and then John Duran gets another start for me we need to keep him fresh we need to keep him ticking over again not really getting minutes in the Premier League so get his legs out there rest someone else and perhaps he will get a goal what do you guys think though what would be your lineups would you make any changes to that if you would comment down below now let's just talk about Lille at home and then I'll give you my prediction for this game so I'm going to chuck a couple of uh, stats up on the C at uh, the scene the screen here. This is Lille's home form since August the 20th last year. One loss, three draws, and then let's count them together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten wins. So ten, three, and one. They even got a draw against Paris Saint-Germain, Champions League quarter finalists, may I add. Their only loss came last year in September to Stade Rem. Um, and that was a 2-1 defeat. 
uh, where they conceded two early goals before half time. Uh, next to that, you can see their home form in the Europa Conference League uh, four wins and one draw to Strum Graz, uh, which was in the last round of the competition. Um, and then we, the last one, which almost seems like a joke. I mean, first of all, why is there a team called Golden Lion uh, knocking about in Francais? But Lille did beat them 12 0, and that is in like their version of the FA Cup. I think it's like the Coupe de France or something, Tour de France, and that might be cycling, who knows, um, over in Lille. I think the prize for that one is a sack of potato seeds for the farm, and they would have won that prize because they did score 12 goals against Golden Lion to beat them 12-0 in that competition. So they are quite formidable at home, and that's something that we need to take into consideration. We only have a slender 2-1 aggregate advantage going into this game so you know we slip up and have a 2-0 defeat a 3-1 defeat something like that um, and we're out of Europe um, and like I mentioned at the start of the video yes I think the Premier League and getting into the Champions League will still be our priority I understand a lot of us including me would love to see Villa raise a European trophy but the game has changed in terms of financial fair play in terms of revenue streams uh, and income streams into the football club there's a lot of internal movement going around at Aston Villa at the moment I think a new stadium is on the horizon which I'll make a video on a little bit later on um, but in terms of revenue in terms of sponsorship in terms of advertisement TV income getting Aston Villa out there as a global brand that V Sports can build up so that we we have more money in the kitty going forward and we don't get stung by FFP I think the clear objective will be to get into the Champions League next season it will open up a little bit more money in summer so that we can be competitive in that competition and again the money that it will bring in um, and the you know the expenditure of our brand uh, is literally it can't be put into words how important that will be for Villa for V Sports and for the future of our football club going forward so that we don't just get pushed back into the wayside like a Leicester that can't sustain stuff going forward and you end up getting stung by FFP. It's a smart game, it's a business game now and to crack the top six cartel you need to be very, very smart and you need to be in the world's biggest competitions to get that money in. So I think that is going to be the prerogative. That being said, you look at the teams that are left in the Conference League and Aston Villa should be winning that competition. It's as simple as that. We're fourth in the Premier League, which is a feat way more impressive than any of the other teams left in the competition. We have a really, really strong squad. We've had a few players come back from injuries. Now Morgan Rogers has been a revelation that allows us to rest some players that team should be able to go out and at the minimum get a nil nil draw against Lille and that will be enough to take us through to the semi-final we have to be clever Lille have not played a game in between our first leg and now we've had a very very good and competitive game against one of the Premier League's finest teams this season Lille don't have a game until the 24th now which is what five six days after they play us we have a game three four days later against Bournemouth again in the Premier League where we're pushing for Champions League spots so all the pressure is on Villa all the scheduling goes against Villa but again Unai Emery has just been pulling masterclass after masterclass out of his bottom for us at the moment he is a European genius he knows how to get teams through in these types of competitions and I back him to do it again I actually think we're going to go to France and for the first time since September the 26th 2023 hand Lille a big fat red L on their home form record I think we're only going to do it why one goal to nil I'm backing my boy John Jada Duran to get that goal late in the first half or early in the second half probably from a counter attack I think we are going to set up relatively defensive in this game similarly to how we frustrated Arsenal and then we just hit them on the counter attack John Duran 1-0, Villa in a Europe semi-final. Then we go and bang Bournemouth on the weekend as well. Preview for that one coming soon. If you have any different thoughts, guys, leave your comments down below. I'm working on a few special videos to come over the next couple of weeks. Um, and as always, up the Villa. Be nice to everyone. Let's go get in a semi. That sounds terrible.